Hello and welcome to San Jose Diridon Station. Today we're taking a look at Caltrain's brand new Stadler Kiss EMUs as we ride north on their newly electrified commuter corridor. First opened in December of 1935 under the name Cahill Depot, San Jose Diridon Station has been serving passengers for a little under 91 years. A major passenger hub for the Bay Area, San Jose Diridon serves Caltrain and ACE commuter trains, the VTA light rail around San Jose, Amtrak's Capital Corridor inner city trains, and the Coast Starlight long distance service between Los Angeles and Seattle. The station building is beautiful, but unfortunately is closed for renovations. That's no problem today, as what we're really after is out on the platforms behind the station, and that's Caltrain's electrified commuter line. Tickets for Caltrain can be purchased either through the app or at Caltrain ticket machines. Fares can also be paid using the Bay Area Clipper Transit card. Fares are relatively reasonable considering Caltrain's 77-mile corridor, and as of September 1st, Caltrain has begun offering $1 one-way and $2 round-trip tickets to youth passengers under the age of 18. As we arrive on the platforms, so too does one of Caltrain's beautiful electric trains. This is a KISS, an electric multiple unit manufactured by Swiss company Stadler in Salt Lake City. As with many of Stadler's trains, KISS is an acronym, which stands for Comfortable, Innovative, Sprint-Capable Suburban Train. Popular in Europe and around the world, the double-deck train provides unparalleled quality and comfort for suburban rail transit. For those out of the loop, electric multiple units, or EMUs, are permanently coupled electric train sets, which feature distributed power across multiple bogies instead of a traditional locomotive. This distributed power allows for faster, smoother acceleration, reducing travel times without the need for increased top speeds. Caltrain ordered 23 of these seven-car trains, totaling 147 rail cars, and replacing their 93 Nippon Shario gallery cars and the majority of their 41 Bombardier bi-level cars. The new trains are amazingly quiet. Aside from the pedestrian alert bell, these EMUs produce very little noise, even from the outside. An electric hum from the powered bogies is all you get from each train, a major step forward compared to the old rickety gallery cars and diesel power units. With electric trains comes a need for electric power. Caltrain's EMUs run on 25 kV 60 Hz AC power, provided through the network of overhead catenary wires. Overhead power is the standard for rail networks across the world, and will come in handy once California high-speed rail joins the corridor up to San Francisco in the coming decade. Alright, enough talk, let's get on board. The door slides shut and our train departs up the Peninsula Corridor. Caltrain's EMUs are operated in a 2x2, with a mix of forward and rearward facing seats. Each airline style row offers a solid 4 to 5 inches of legroom between my knees and the seat back, the space below available for personal bags. Grab handles are found on the inside of each seat for easier entrance and egress. No tray tables are provided at airline-style rows. Instead, tables in groups of four can be found around the car for working on the go. Outlets are found in between each seat, though they're hard to reach and require quite a bit of effort to keep chargers in place. Above each row, passengers will find luggage racks with coat hooks located between the windows. 
The actual seats are fairly comfortable, their grey vinyl covers accented by a red stripe at head level. The new upholstery is quite firm, but that's to be expected with new seats, though the actual seat backs are slightly too upright for my liking. At the ends of each car are a few aisle-facing seats, allowing for increased capacity without impeding traffic on the stairs. The lower level is much the same as the upper, but includes space for passengers with disabilities. An intermediate level is found between the upper and lower floors, and includes a bit more seating. It's also here where we find the high-level door plug. When California High-Speed Rail joins the corridor, high-level platforms will need to be constructed to accommodate the high-speed trains. When that happens, a new set of high-level doors will be added to each train, allowing them to run at high-level platforms. The interiors of the new EMUs feel much brighter and spacious than the trains they're replacing. The generous lighting, high ceilings, clean materials, and inclusion of glass makes these trains feel large and spacious. A number of passenger-oriented improvements have come about with these new trains. For starters, electronic displays are found throughout the train and are paired with automatic announcements at each station. Now, clearly the system is still being finalized as it wasn't working on our northbound journey, but I can confirm that the announcements exist and everything was working when riding earlier in the day. Climate control has also made a step forward. A look at the ceiling reveals rows of holes across the car, and they're not just for decoration. No, these holes are actually for the air conditioning. Smaller holes help spread the climate control across the car instead of blasting it all in one place. Safety and security of passengers is a must on public transit. In addition to improved sight lines throughout the train, Caltrain can keep an eye on everything through the numerous security cameras placed throughout. I know I said the new trains are quiet from the outside, but they're even better on the inside. The improved suspension and noise isolation has effectively removed any track noise, the interiors filled with the light hum of the electric power units below. Station stops are frequent on our local train, which means the doors are constantly opening and closing. To help passengers know which doors are open at any given station, the last section of ceiling LEDs on that side turns green. This is also true for the lights upstairs, which can be helpful when in a rush. My one big complaint about these trains is the door chime. The chime is way too loud. The doors are about to close. For your safety, please stay clear of the doors and And while yes, it's a safety thing to alert passengers of closing doors, do they have to be this loud? Moving through these trains is incredibly easy. Each car is connected by a flexible gangway, which is either separated by a door or entirely open. Onward travel is a major part of any rail network, and for many Caltrain passengers, they choose to cover the final mile by bike. Caltrain has embraced the cycling culture by including two bike cards on each new train, located in cars 3 and 6. Helpfully denoted by cyclist figures on the doors, each bike car includes an open floor with bungee cords to store bikes while in transit. Caltrain KISS EMUs include a single bathroom, located in car 2. An accessible facility, the bathroom is massive and very clean, with automatic soap, sink, and hand dryer. There are plenty of handrails around to help passengers with disabilities, a trash can and changing table found on the opposite wall. As nice as the bathroom is, it's the only one for the entire train. On peak services with hundreds of passengers, the wait for the bathroom could be longer than it would take to get from San Jose to San Francisco, which is a little ridiculous. A second bathroom would definitely have been nice, but there's not much that can be done now. There's also zero indication where the bathroom is on the train, or if there is one at all. While on board, I saw passengers roaming the aisle in search of the bathroom, only to realize it was on the other side of the train. 
not ideal when you really have to go. With new trains comes a new schedule, and of course, improved travel times. Our train today is a weekend local service, making all stops between San Jose and San Francisco with a travel time of an hour and 40 minutes. Now, this is still operating on Caltrain's old schedule designed around diesel trains. When the new schedule starts on September 21st, local trains will take just one hour and 19 minutes to cover the length of the corridor, the savings of 21 minutes for local trains. The new schedule includes trains every 15 to 20 minutes during peak hours at 16 stations, every 30 minutes during midday and evenings, and 30 minute frequency on weekends. Speed is not the name of the game when it comes to commuter rail. For services like this, acceleration is king, and these electric trains are the perfect solution. With 16 powered axles, each EMU can deliver up to 164,000 pounds of tractive effort, up from the 65,000 pounds of the aging F40s and 85,000 of the MP36s. This results in a maximum acceleration of 1 meter per second squared, or 2.24 miles per hour per second, which means a 0 to 60 time of 26.7 seconds at full acceleration. Now, these trains can't deliver that full tractive effort beyond 23 miles per hour, but it's still cool to think about. One of the best passenger amenities on these new trains is also an invisible one, the Wi-Fi. Caltrain has equipped their new EMUs with state-of-the-art Wi-Fi, and when I say state-of-the-art, I mean it. The network speeds are unreal. I was able to see peaks of over 300 megabits per second and an average download speed of 242 megabits per second. That's home levels of Wi-Fi connectivity on a train. Caltrain splurged on the Wi-Fi as they intend these trains to serve as an office before the office for commuting passengers, and improved connectivity is one of the best ways to promote this. An improvement with these new trains that will often go overlooked are the new cabs. Stadler Kiss EMUs include a modern and spacious cab with digital displays and significantly improved visibility. The displays include all of the information the driver could ever need, with readouts for everything from speed, voltage, and tractive effort to car temperature and bathroom water supply. The control layout is also more comfortable, ergonomic, and driver-friendly. Compare that with the cab of the older F40s or gallery cars, and you can see just how great of an improvement these really are. New trains also mean new horns. Gone are the Nathan horns, replaced by a more European one, which sounds a little something like this. One of Caltrain's main goals with the electrification project is environmental improvement. Of course, electric trains run on, well, electricity, which means zero localized emissions along the corridor. Additionally, EMUs use regenerative braking, which captures the kinetic energy of the train and converts it into electrical energy, which can be transferred back into the catenaries. Regenerative braking is used down to just 3 miles per hour, after which the mechanical brakes take over. This means the vast majority of the energy is being recovered instead of bled off as heat, as would be the case in old trains. All of this electricity has to come from somewhere, and Caltrain has a green solution for that. Once full electric service launches on September 21st, 100% of electricity produced for the catenary system will be from renewable sources. Although San Francisco to San Jose and beyond to Tamian has been electrified, the line south to Gilroy has missed out on this improvement. South of Tamian Station, the tracks are owned by Union Pacific. This means coordinating with Union Pacific to construct electrification infrastructure along their right-of-way, and seeing as they don't gain anything from the construction, they have no interest in agreeing to the electrification. As an alternative, Caltrain decided to order a bi-mode battery electric multiple unit to supplement the service to Gilroy. The BEMU will charge off the overhead catenary system between San Jose and Tamian before running on battery power to and from Gilroy. The BEMU is still under development and clearance from the FRA, but will be coming in the near future. 
Until then, Caltrain will continue to run diesel trains south of San Jose with a convenient three-minute cross-platform connection offered at San Jose Diridon. While the present is shining, the future of Caltrain also looks bright. California High-Speed Rail is set to use the corridor on its way into San Francisco, and with it will come more grade separation and increased speeds. California High-Speed Rail is planning to grade separate the rest of the corridor and increase running speeds from 79 to 110 miles per hour, a speed that the KISS trains can reach easily. Of course, no one knows exactly when that will happen, but it's something to look forward to. Caltrain's electrification is, in my opinion, a major success, or at least it will be once full service begins. The new trains are faster, quieter, and more comfortable than the old rolling stock. Of course, the new trains aren't perfect. Some minor signage changes, volume adjustments, and maybe an additional bathroom would go a long way, but these trains are still a huge leap forward for the Bay Area. It is worth noting that as much as everyone totes electrification as the future, this is in fact the norm for most railroad networks around the world. Electric trains are the standard for commuter and intercity rail almost everywhere. Rail travel has been looked down upon in the US for so long, and it's high time for America to step into the modern era. Caltrain's electrification proves that it can be done, and once full service is launched, it will show just how effective electrification can be. Hopefully other commuter networks will see the success of this project and start working to electrify their own service, but only time will tell. Although the new trains are already in service, Caltrain will officially launch the electrification on September 21st, alongside a weekend-long launch party. On the 21st and 22nd, Caltrain will be hosting community celebrations at stations around the corridor, including two major festivals at Palo Alto Station on Saturday the 21st and San Mateo Station on Sunday the 22nd. Community performances, booths, food trucks, games, and giveaways will be happening all day long, and best of all, everyone rides Caltrain free all weekend. So if you're in the area, get on board and check out the future of Caltrain service for free. For more information on Caltrain's launch party and events throughout the weekend, head on over to caltrain.com slash launch party. Millbrae is as far north as we'll head today, and coming to a stop, the doors slide open with their obnoxiously loud chime. Getting off early does mean we can see the true acceleration capabilities firsthand, and oh man are they fast! For comparison, here's an F40 set departing Millbrae in the same direction. It takes about 30 seconds for the diesel to go from a standstill to the end of the platform, with an exit speed of approximately 16.9 miles per hour. Compare that to the 19 seconds it takes the KISS to do the same, exiting the station at about 35.1 miles per hour. That's almost double the exit speed of the diesel train in less time for a longer train, which is crazy. Granted, this isn't a perfect comparison, but it still gives you a great idea of what these trains can really do. I hope you enjoyed our look at Caltrain's brand new electric trains, but with our journey now complete, it's time to bring today's video to a close. If you're new around here, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my loyal patrons and members. Y'all are amazing and your incredible generosity is always greatly appreciated. If you too want your name in the video or just want to support the channel in more ways than one, then head on over to the links in the description below. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.